Welcome back to GMK, folks, on this Storm Saga Sunday. Today, we're going to take you on part two of my trilogy of November storm chases I've had in my career. Last week, we took you to Oklahoma. This week, we're going to go to the Midwest, almost in my home state, some neighboring states here on a day that was historic for several reasons, including being one of the biggest outbreaks of tornadoes ever seen in one of these states. But Ma Nature certainly made me work for the tornadoes that I saw this day, and it was not an easy chase by any stretch of the imagination. The fall season of 2013 remains my most prolific fall for tornadoes. Coming out of October, I had already documented tornadoes in Nebraska and Illinois, but Ma Nature had her biggest day still left in the chamber, and she was locked and loaded over the Midwest for November 17th. Uh, the first high risk for me this year. There's the tornado threat. Again, I'm right over in here. And basically covers the entire state of Indiana. It was a super early day for me. I was getting on my first storms in central Illinois before noon that morning. Unfortunately, the stage was set for a very tough chase day as storms were moving northeast at highway speeds. 60 miles an hour. They were nearly impossible to keep up with, so my plan was to intercept them along I-74 as I moved east, but my timing initially was off. Storms that were producing tornadoes to my south would cycle, meaning I'd catch the storm while it was recycling between tornadoes, and then it would end up producing another tornado once it blasted well out of my range to my north. The first half of my chase day was spent missing tornadoes as I cherry-picked storms along the interstate. The biggest miss for me was this monster EF4 tornado that hit just outside of Peoria, Illinois in the town of Washington. It's going to go to our south though, I think. It's moving right to left barely. Every storm I intercepted either produced a tornado before or after it crossed my path as I continued to push east toward Indiana. But that's when my timing started to change. I got on this cell just inside the Indiana state line. It was producing a tornado as I arrived, but heavy rain and wind prevented me from seeing it. However, I did observe some damage in the town of Vetersburg about a mile to my east. This mobile home was completely demolished, and as I exited for my next storm, I saw this semi flipped over on the interstate. That delay ended up saving my chase as I finally got on this storm, catching views from a distance of my first tornado of this event. This storm, like most others, was racing northeast at over 60 miles per hour, and I lost sight of this tornado pretty quick. But this one just touched down outside of Advanced, has moved very quickly just to the south of Lebanon and is continuing to the east of Lebanon. I moved east, closing in on Indianapolis, where I saw my next tornado on my last storm intercept of the day. I was almost 10 miles away, and my view wasn't great, but I watched this tornado kick up a plume of debris. It was clear it had hit something. I aimed myself toward Lebanon, northwest of Indy, and rolled onto what made that plume. This Starbucks took a direct hit, and several cars in the parking lot were resorted by the EF2 tornado. Fortunately, there were no injuries in this area, and the only casualty was me not having a pumpkin mocha for my long drive back home to southern Illinois. These tornadoes in Indiana were two of over 30 tornadoes to strike the state that day, making it the largest tornado outbreak in the month of November and the second largest tornado outbreak of all time for the state of Indiana. This was a very frustrating chase day for me and very difficult with storm speeds so high, but in the end, it did yield my first two Indiana tornadoes and my second, albeit slightly successful, November tornado chase day. Well, how about that? We were just talking about this earlier at 6 o'clock. November storms, November tornadoes, not, I mean, completely unheard of. In fact, we had some warnings over just what west or east of us, rather, uh, in eastern Kansas and in Missouri. But you've, you've tracked them all in all parts of the country, including Indiana. I, My goodness. I have, and that's a great lead-in because next week's is the, is the one I am most excited for because that was a November tornado event, mm -hmm. historic and it happened right here in Cakeland in 2015, proof that we can indeed see severe weather this late in the year, and it was one of my best chases ever. I am very excited for next week's Storm Saga. My goodness, I mean, but it must have been a, a definitely, I mean, like you said, frustrating because you had gone all over 
and you're like, I can't get to the storm. That everything was so well, fast. And then there, there were some stuck. storms. The storm that produced the tornado that I missed that I featured in there. Thank you, Adam Lucio, for, yeah. for providing me that video and rubbing it in my face. Oh. Uh, that storm <laughs> at one point was moving almost 80 miles per hour. So logistically for that, you want to stay like north of the storms yeah. as they come at you from the south and just hope your timing is good so that you can see them on the highway you're on. And obviously the first half of that chase, I was not in the best of timing. With you, you got your start with chasing how many years ago? You say more than 20, right? So Yeah, it was 1997, my I, first chase. My thoughts are like, you know, with this experience matters, especially with a storm moving that fast, because you have to think about things very quickly about, okay, how quickly do you know, how far am I to get to where this could be? and how fast it's going. I mean, there's a lot of maneuvering on your part. It, it, it is, and there's a lot of experience, and a lot of things I tell, like, new chasers particularly, is you, you really need a lot of logistical planning because the way you chase in western Kansas is going to be different than the way you chase, say, in Missouri or Indiana. You know, road, terrain, all that yeah. stuff factors into how you maneuver around storms, and when you can't see storms as clearly, you've got to give yourself a little bit more room, and especially when they're moving 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. It's, it's something to think about. But in your earliest days, I mean, you were like under the wing of other people. So that kind of oh, yeah. helped guide you and, into becoming And without social media, yeah. you were forced into that. You yeah. know, it's easy to kind of hide away from people nowadays. So I'm, I'm <laughs> very, very fortunate. And um, I consider myself very lucky to have gotten into this early enough on where it did kind of force me to get in with people. And uh, a lot of them still lifelong friends of mine. Well, we're so fortunate to have you and to have buddies who can go and share some footage with you. It's okay, Tony, because you're going to be sharing it with them sometime and be like, ah, I got the footage right here. So don't you worry oh, about I, that. And believe me, I do. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much fun. If you want to check out everything with Tony and his storm chasing adventures, I highly recommend that you go and check him out on social media. He's on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Lots of videos, lots of pictures. The pictures, I think, are always amazing, Tony. So I can't wait to see more of them. Uh, even, you never know, we're, we're still mid-November, so there might be more on deck for us, that's for sure, right here in Cakeland. All right, guys, we're going to be, be right back with more right here on GNK.